Welcome back to the channel everybody. I am Florida Boy and this is my EDC channel. Today's video is going to be another knife review and uh, I've had a little bit of pocket time with this. This knife was given to me by my buddy Dan. Dan, I super appreciate it. Without any further ado, the Kaiser Graziasso. Let's get into it. Graziasso, Gra Graziasso, Grazi I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so this knife uh, was sent to me by my buddy Dan, and this is a Sharif Manganis design. There we go. You can see kind of the maker's mark there on the blade, and this thing is pretty wicked. Um, we got so I'm going to use my nail here to stop it from. There you go. So you see this thing is super drop shut. Uh, just a little bit of encouragement past that point and she slides right down. So I've had some pocket time with this and um, I would have to say that this is a great knife. Uh, I really actually enjoy this quite a bit. We're going to actually slide on down just a hair. There we go. Maybe lift her up a tad. Uh, let's see. Let's see. How's that? A little bit better? I don't know. Looks looks pretty good to me. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I had to fix that camera angle just a hair. Um, but this is a this is a really cool design on this knife. Uh, I've got a couple things I like, a couple things I don't, and uh, we'll we'll go over it. So I did the unboxing, and I don't know. I can't remember if we did all the skinny on this. So we'll hit it just real fast. Um, this knife itself. This knife is right at eight inches and the weight on it isn't too bad. If I can find, there it is. Okay. That drop shut is pretty crazy though. There we go. 4.6 ounces. So 4.6 ounces, definitely a good size, has a decent weight for it being copper. Um, if you are kind of one of those metrics snobs it doesn't really hit the you know one ounce of weight for every every inch blade and but that's okay that's okay you get a little bit extra weight because of that copper that copper really really adds to it so if we look at the knife itself we can see we have copper bolsters here on the top and the bottom or well not the bottom sorry <laughs> copper backspacer uh copper bolster so we'll see if we can get um, see if we can get up and close and personal there. There you go. Just take a nice little, just take it in, take it in. Nice, nice little copper. Okay. And then we'll see down here on the bottom, we have this nice little copper backspacer since I already brought it up and called it a bottom bolster there for a second. <laughs> so there we go. And we'll take a look at the handle. So the handle is G10. A uh, little bit of little bit of grip there, nothing crazy. Not gonna not gonna snag your pocket or anything. Feels feels pretty nice. Uh, we've got N690 on the blade. It has stayed pretty sharp, and I don't have any burrs or anything. I've used it just for like normal tasks, um, opening boxes, breaking down boxes, stuff like that at work. I don't do anything super crazy. Uh, the jimping on the back of the spine is actually pretty good. I like that we have this little. Um, kind of like a ramp here for your thumb. Excuse me if I don't get the terminology right. I, I wouldn't label myself a knife nut, but I'm definitely an enthusiast. So I like I like the placement you can get here. You got a little bit of a finger choil, so you really can choke up. Um, getting those exact cuts, like utility cuts, not too bad because you're able to just kind of bite up right here. You could if you needed to really choke up on it, you can. Um, all in all, let me grab my little... Uh, where is my little, oh, there she is. Wipe off the blade a little bit. Keep it, keep it nice. I think I might be getting sick. I, I'm running out of breath pretty fast. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk and I feel like I'm running out of breath. So we have a drop point blade here is what it la is labeled as. Um, this is. You know, everybody throws around the term modified. Um, this is kind of a modified drop point to me. And we've almost got like a swedge here at the top. 
but we do have a thick pretty thick spine so not much of a swedge but it, it kind of looks like they were going to go for that and then didn't so it's just kind of a nice aesthetic on the blade itself um very very sharp out of the box it definitely passed the paper test whenever i was cutting with it um and that, like i said i haven't i haven't dropped i haven't done anything this is just factory edge still well unless unless dan sharpened it or anything before he sent it to me but maybe um so going on real quick to something that i'm not a huge huge fan of so looking right here if we can focus there we go so this flipper tab i like how minimal the flipper tab is uh there's not a whole lot there it's not going to catch on your pocket it's not going to do anything crazy uh but for me it's uh, it's a little hard to actuate sometimes i don't know if i'm getting some lock stick uh i did i have taken it apart i've cleaned it i've oiled it hoping that maybe that would help it hasn't helped yet it could still just be breaking in um but you, you gotta light switch it so straight down but oh man you really really gotta put some put some force on there <laughs> i don't know well i guess but like see if we're pressing so i'll start pressing now there and that's what it takes to break. If we do something like, uh, I don't know, we'll do the concept shard here. Whenever I go to flip this, just glides out. So that that flipper tab's a little bit hard to maneuver. Um, realistically, that's about my only complaint is that flipper tab. Um, and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the flipper tab itself or if it is. Um, like I said, maybe a little bit of lock stick or just something, something of that nature. I won't know until I've used it a little bit more, I guess. Um, I don't think it's going to go away though. Uh, I, I think it's, I think it's there to stay. I think that might just be part of this design. Um, but I do like that the bolster kind of hides for the most part, hides the flipper tab. It was oh so close to hiding that flipper tab. See, almost if it would have lined up just a little bit more, it would have been pretty cool. Um, we do have a liner lock. You can see my liner lock on here. I am getting probably 65, 70%. Um, which, you know, if that's making a little bit of a, oh man, sometimes it's really hard to open. Uh, if that's making a little bit extra contact on the blade, that could be making it kind of hard to swing out. Uh, who knows? Um, maybe, maybe I'll try pushing it back, maybe bending it just a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see perhaps. <laughs> so, uh, so far I am a big fan of this knife. Uh, the action, the action is really, really good. Um, it is drop shut. The detent feels like it is pretty dialed in the, like I said, it's just that it may just be the tab. Maybe you just can't really get the way that tab is. It's just like, you can't get a whole lot of purchase on it with your finger. But it does, it's got good action. It sounds really good too. Whenever you flick it out, you get like a thwack. Black. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds, it sounds good. Um, if I put a couple knives, we'll just, I don't have much on the table. But we'll just put a couple up for comparison. So here is the concept shard. Concept shard, however you want to say it. Um, I've got the Kupikoas. There you go. And then, and then... Um, oh, I've got some wild knives, not wild, but stuff I don't normally use. I do normally use that one though. That is your rat model one. That's a, uh, that's definitely a crowd favorite. So there you go. That'll give you a good idea of the size of that bad boy. What, what is this? The Dreaver? Okay. I've got the Olight Dreaver up here. <laughs> um, oh man, I've, uh, I've got, I've got just like random knives on the table right now. And that's what we're going to use for comparison. So, uh, next is the, <laughs> the XOM. I got to open it up up here because, um, I, I say whenever I'm playing with the XOM on camera, I say it's a weird angle. I'm only saying it's a weird angle because like literally like see from the table, I can, I can kind of, uh, so dude, I can kind of do this and touch the camera with my finger on there. So I've got maybe that much space between the camera and the table. So it's just kind of an awkward angle to manipulate knives. 
Um, uh, what else do I have? Oh, Lord. Okay. And there you go. Here's a buck 110. <laughs> I have the stuff on the table that I'm currently like reviewing or doing videos for. So uh, that's that's how we end up with the stuff that's on the table. So that should give you a good idea or at least a basic idea of the size of this bad boy. Um, overall the knife, I really do like the knife. It is super, super slicey. It comes down to a pretty thin edge. There we go. We can see that. So we've got pretty thick spine that really, that flat grind brings it down to a really, really thin edge. Um, looks great. Got like a satin finish on the blade, uh, belt satin finish. Uh, overall great knife. Really? Uh, man, I just wish that flipper tab was just a little different. Oh, but it's, it's not bad. It does. You will, uh, you will kind of, kind of be skinning up your fingers a little bit. If you, if you sit there and fidget it, which is kind of what happened with me, I kept fidgeting it for a little while and, um, kind of, kind of ate my finger up just the hair, but it's only cause you got to put so much force. It's not like the, like the, the jimping on the back of that flipper tab. It's really, it's really not bad. Uh, you get a good, you get a good amount of grip, but I don't know if it's just the geometry of it or if I'm getting some lock stick. It's, it might be one of the two. Um, but all right, all right, enough harping about that. Um, so I think the copper on this knife is beautiful. The copper is very, very well done. It's a very nice red copper. You can see pretty much from the area where I use this knife, how I hold it. Typically, I'm right here, um, probably from my finger coming around and looping around when I'm cutting. You can see that we have some patina going on up here on the top, but this part does not. And it's usually because whenever you're rubbing against the copper, you're going to rub that patina off. Um, same thing here. You know, whenever I'm holding the knife, I'm sitting here, especially if I'm doing this, you know, just depending on how I'm holding the knife, you're going to get kind of half patina, half non patina, which is, I mean, that's totally fine. I'm not, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a derogatory remark. That's just just to let you know, whenever you buy a knife or a flashlight and you have copper or you have some kind of exotic metal that does patina, if you touch it, it will transfer to your hands. Um, you will end up with, uh, you know, just a little bit of black on your hands. I don't mind it. I carry a, I carry a hell of a lot of copper and I love copper. Um, so I'm used to that. The backspacer, uh, I haven't really noticed any patina or anything coming on the backspacer. Uh, maybe it might be coated. It looks like I might be getting some right here. Or it could just be because it's in the palm of my hand and I constantly rub it off. Who knows? It's it's one of the one of those few things. Uh, the knife profile, whenever it is inside of the um, the handles here, the liners, uh, you get a pretty nice profile. You just have a little bit of that um, that ramping coming out. I, I like it. I like the profile. The carry profile is good. See now I can't. Oh, there we go. Couldn't get it open there for a second. I think the lock might be sticking. You know what? I'm, I might loosen up that detent a little bit. Um, that could be my fault. I might have tightened it down too much. It is it is centered, though. It's perfectly centered. So uh, just to give you an idea, too, if we take... Here we go. We'll just take the Rat Model 1. We can get an idea of the carry profile here. It does have a very, very slim profile. Uh, that is That is definitely, definitely huge for anybody who's going to carry this in their pocket. Um, we can see here that it is definitely not a big boy at all, not very thick. And if we look at the spine of this or the backside of this guy here, really, really not bad. The size is great. Um, let me grab a little flashlight. We'll flick this guy open, turn on my little, my little light. That might be easier to see from the backside. We can see we have a lot of milling on those liners, uh, definitely to save some weight, which I'm really happy they did. Uh, I carry a lot of copper, so weight savings isn't a huge deal to me, but for some people it might be. So I think, I think for this being copper bolsters, I think, and, and, you know, in the backspacer, I think the weight on this is actually excellent. Um, I have, uh, I have a couple copper flashlight or not flashlights, but copper, uh, knives and they're pretty weighty, uh, especially the, uh, the Olight freeze two that is all copper on the scales. Uh, that that's a chunky boy. I still enjoy carrying it, but it's a chunky boy. When you're holding it, you know you're holding it. That's that's for sure. So going back to the blade one more time, um, we we have a little bit of the Kaiser billboarding going on. Not too bad. We got Kaiser on the side. 
Um, what is what is? I can't even see what that says. It's so tiny. Uh, that must be a model number on the top, on the bottom here. N six ninety. Flip it over. We see Manganis, and then we've got the Grazioso on that side. So, but at least it's kind of small. Um, it's not. It's not terrible. It could have been like all over the blade, like you know, Microtech style. So, at least it's kind of back here at the edge. Whenever you close the blade, obviously you can't. You can't really see anything but the Kaiser and the Manganis on the other side. There you go. So billboarding is not too bad. The blade itself is very nice. I'm glad that they did it that way, honestly, instead of having it out on the blade, because I really do enjoy the blade shape. The drop point is kind of wild to me because we almost have like that recurve, like a Persian recurve going on there at the bottom. So very, very interesting. But like I said, super, super duper slicey. Um, let me grab a little bit of paper. Hold on. Let's, I'll find it here in a second. Oh, look, I found a pocket. We can try that too. That way you can get an idea of the carry profile. Um, there it is. Okay. Sorry. Was not prepared. It was in a drawer. Uh, okay. There we go. Ta-da. I did it. All right. So if we just do a little bit of cut, you know, the paper test tells all. And it failed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you know what? I might need to sharpen this. Um... Yeah, uh, it might have lost its edge already. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I was just hitting. It's kind of hanging up a little bit, though. Um, it's been in the pocket for about two weeks. And like I said, uh, before I started this video, I said I haven't stropped it. I haven't done anything. This is just the edge that it has left. So it actually has held a pretty good edge. Uh, we'll just keep doing some slices here. Uh, if you didn't know... Yes, paper is obviously not like the end-all be-all on the test. Um, yeah, it's, it, I, there's like a down here at the bottom. It feels like it might have a spot that's just just not very sharp anymore. Um, so paper is a fibrous material, so it's actually really really bad for blades. Not bad, but it will dull blades very very fast. And, uh, that's whenever I cut paper, I actually like to cut like a lot of it to see if I can feel a difference as I'm, as I'm getting through paper. Um, but so what I'm noticing from this knife so far, uh, from this tiny little cut test that we're doing is I think down here towards the back, I'm getting kind of, um, there's no burr. Yeah, there's no burr or anything. I don't feel anything crazy. But we might be a little bit dull towards the end here, but up here after the recurve, it looks like I've still got plenty of edge. So um, I don't know if I've favored cutting on the back just a couple weeks I've been carrying it, uh, but I might have. <laughs> I don't really pay attention too much what side, what part of the blade I'm cutting on, uh, but I should probably start paying attention to that just so I you know, know for, for future self. Uh, so how does this thing look in a pocket? Uh, it actually rides pretty well. Uh, there you go. You can see we pretty much almost have an ultra deep carry clip. Just a little bit of the knife itself sticking out. Uh, I do like the pocket clip a lot. We don't have the Loch Ness Monster really sticking up like some of the knives out there. If we go to, um, what do I got? Here we go. Let's talk Kubikoas. There you go. We can see Nessie made an appearance for this knife here. But when we look at this knife, we do have a little bit of a flare at the edge. But it's not too bad. It's just enough to kind of help you get it in the pocket. And it does. It slides in and out really, really easy. Um, there's not really the G10 being that it has a little bit of grip, but not overly grippy. Uh, it makes it pretty easy to slide this thing in and out of the pocket. So um, that's a big thing for me. Whenever I'm done with a knife or whenever I want to use a knife, I want that thing to slide out of the pocket, slide in the pocket and be done. I don't want to have to, you know, slide the fingernail under the pocket clip and slide it over the seam of the pocket. I, we all have those knives that you, you really have to put in some extra effort to get it in the pocket. I, I know, I know I'm, I have some too. You don't even have to say it. It's, it's irritating, but with this one pocket clip is good. Um, I like that. We don't have, like I said, the Loch Ness monster coming to visit us on this knife. Um, and let's talk about the very last thing. So the very last thing is price. 
Um, normally this thing I think runs a hundred bucks and you can pick them up on like Amazon and Blade HQ, uh, places like that right now, I think have them for about 70 bucks. Uh, I don't think that's bad at all. Um, we're, we're just kind of treating my specimen as kind of the normal, you know, um, I, I don't know if the kind of the, mm, I don't know if the flipper tab or the lock stick or whatever's going on with mine. I don't know if that's something that is normal for these, or maybe it's just the one, you know, maybe it's just my example, but, um, eh, it's not that bad. I'm sure, I'm sure either the detent can be tweaked or something can be tweaked and it won't be that bad. Um, I just really, I haven't really fooled around with it a whole lot. It has gotten better. So that's why I say, I don't know if it'll go away entirely. But uh, it's gotten better on this example. So um, maybe, maybe we'll see. Uh, it's definitely going to see some more pocket time. I really enjoy the blade shape. Um, it's very easy to get in and out of the pocket. Uh, sometimes I just open it up and it flies open. Whenever I'm done with it, it drops shut. And then I'm done with it. So it really is a lot of fun to fidget. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun to use. And uh, at 70 bucks, you get copper and G10 with an N690 blade with a little bit of a recurve, drop point, flat grind. I think it's great. I, I mean, honestly, it's, it's Kaiser. Kaiser makes good knives. So, um, yes, I, I would recommend this knife, uh, be a little, be a little weary or leery or whatever you want to say. Be a little cautious, um, flipper tab wise. Like I said, I just, I don't know if that's part of the design. Um, I've, I've kind of Googled it and looked it up and I don't see anybody talking about that. So it could just be this one. Maybe. I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit more research. I'm definitely going to take it apart and kind of uh, look over it again just to see if I can kind of fix her up. So we'll see. I'll update you. I'll let you know. Uh, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, yes, great knife. Dan, I love it. Thank you, sir. I, I really, really appreciate it, man. You're always you're always such a big support for the channel. <laughs> I can't, can't thank you enough, buddy. Um, for everybody else, too. Thank you so much for stopping by, checking out the video. That means everything. I really, really greatly appreciate appreciate everybody, and uh, especially everybody that's always, you know, talking back and forth with me in the comment section. That's always a lot of fun. I do need to catch up and uh, get on there and reply to some more comments. There's always so many now. <laughs> it takes me a minute to get through all the comments. I have to, like, take a break, eat a sandwich, come back, start replying again. Um, but it is a lot of fun, and I, I greatly appreciate all you guys. So... If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. I post pretty much every day. <laughs> Thank you again, guys. Catch you on the next one.